I'm about to change the oil in this car, and when I do, there's other items to check, like tire pressure, battery water, brake fluid, and that's just to name a few. Come on, let me show you. Locate your drain plug and remove it. Let the oil drain into a suitable receptacle. Maybe that you can transfer it into gallon jugs and take it to a service station or another garage someplace for proper disposal. Please don't just let this oil drain out on our ground. We don't need it in our atmosphere or in our earth. An old drain washer can be a nuisance. They'll leak if you try to use them twice. Get a new drain washer before you replace the drain plug. Replace the drain plug and snug it up. With the new drain washer, it's not necessary to really, really tighten it. Just snug it up. Next, you'll need to locate your oil filter. If it's necessary to be under your car, please have your car supported by safety-approved jack stands. Anytime you're under a car, use jack stands. Using an oil filter wrench, slacken the oil filter and remove it. Keep your catch pan under the oil filter because you're going to lose some more oil when you take the filter off. Now with your new oil filter, you're going to want to lubricate the sealing gasket. Take some of the new oil that you're going to put in the motor and lubricate the gasket. This will make it a lot easier for taking it off next time. Making sure that the old gasket is not still on the oil filter seat. Replace the new filter. New filter should go on only hand tight. Tighten it up as tight as you can get it hand tight. Next step, put the oil in the engine. Check your owner's manual for the right type of oil and the right number of quarts, but do that next. And please, take your oil bottles, drain them into the receptacle also before you dispose of them. The next thing to do is to replace your oil filler cap. Now, check the oil. Pull the dipstick from the crankcase and wipe it off. Insert it back into the tube and pull it out and check it. It'll be clearly marked with a full or an add line. This one happens to have two dots. The oil here is very clean, so it might be difficult to see it, but it does come up to the second dot, indicating that this is full. Let's check those other items on the list. We'll start with tire pressure. Locate your valve stem and remove the valve stem cap. This keeps the dirt out of the valve stem. Using an approved tire gauge, check the pressure. Most car tires run between 28 and 32 pounds. This one's 32 pounds. Check all four of your tires and your spare. And replace your valve stem cap. Next, we'll check the tread for the nails, tread wear, uneven wear, wear bars. Look at your tires. Run your hands over your tires. If they feel bumpy or lumpy, they could be in bad shape and need replacing. Most batteries today are the sealed type and don't have water level that needs to be checked. If yours does, remove the caps and look down in the holes. If they're low, Top it up to about an inch from the top with distilled water. Don't forget that batteries contain acid that can eat through your clothes and your skin. And they also produce an explosive gas that can explode the battery. Be very careful, please, around batteries. Next, let's check the brake fluid level in the brake master cylinder reservoir. Locate the reservoir generally in the engine compartment above the driver's feet. Today, most of them are a clear plastic bottle. 
with a minimum and a maximum line clearly marked on the side. If the level is down just a little bit, it's normal brake wear. If it's real low, you probably have a brake problem that you should have looked at. Next, let's check the level of the power steering fluid in the power steering reservoir. Once again, generally clearly marked with a minimum and a maximum line. Both of these fluids need to be filled with the approved fluid for your car. Check your owner's manual. Windshield washers, very important. If the windshield washer reservoir is empty, let's just fill it up with some windshield washer fluid. If it's the premix type, just add it in. If it's a concentrate, mix it in a gallon jug and fill it up. Next, let's check the engine coolant level. Locate the overflow tank or reservoir and check the fluid level. If it's down, add straight antifreeze to the reservoir. Don't ever open the radiator with the car running or with it hot. It's very seldom we need to check the radiator itself, but if you do, do it when it's cold. Remove the cap. Look, if it's low inside, if you can see the fins, Top it up with straight antifreeze or coolant. Next, let's check the air filter. Some air filters are located directly on top of the carburetor with a wing nut and clips to take off the top of the air filter canister. Remove the air filter and check it for dirt, bugs, any sort of debris that might be on it. It's also a good idea to wipe out the canister if there's anything in it. This is a real dirty air filter. We're going to get rid of it and put this new clean air filter in. When doing so, be certain to put the air filter back in properly and fasten all clips that held the air cleaner canister together. An oil change and preventive maintenance are vital for the smooth running of your automobile. Done on a regular basis, your car will run better, last longer, and save you money.